The Empire of Banalia is recognized today as one of the oldest and mightiest nations on Dominaria. With its capital city guarded by glorious angels and knights in shining armor, it's easy to see how Banalia has become known as one of the greatest nations on the plain. However, Banalia wasn't always as it is today, and the Empire has endured a great deal of hardships over the centuries of its existence. What would become Banalia began as the ruins of Benfosa in the former Shaelton Empire. The knight, Torsten von Ursus, came to this city after leaving his home nation of Rena behind. Rena had come under the control of a terrible sorcerer, and Von Ursus saw in himself no desire to stay in his former knightly order. Using his impressive charisma and military strategies, Torsten Von Ursus waged a devastating campaign in Benfosa and beyond, bringing into existence a new nation that he would dub Benalia. Before his passing, Von Ursus handed down a decree known as the Lost Edict. It dictated that he would not have a direct successor as leader of Banalia. Instead, each of his seven lieutenants and their direct descendants would be tasked with maintaining different aspects of his empire. These seven clans, Joriev, Kroger, Turnsev, Tarmula, Deniz, Rosecott, and Capuchin would each cycle through the control of different divisions of the nation. One year, Clan Capuchin would be in control of the nation's military. The next, it would fall under Clan Kroger. Under this system, each of the seven clans was deemed to be equal in their power over Banalia. In these early years of the Empire, the worship of the planeswalker Sarah was largely condemned in Banalia. Instead, most Banalkin would turn to the worship of the Church of Angelfire. Gabriel Angelfire was known for his impressive, burning will, which many in the Empire resonated with. The Empire of Banalia would grow in power and influence throughout Dominaria's history and as a result was included in Urza's infamous bloodline project. Through selective breeding, the Planeswalker hoped to sire a breed of men capable of fighting back the hordes of Phyrexia. It had long been prophesied that a member of Benalia's Capuchin clan would be the one to bring defeat to Yagmuth. Urza would incorporate the clan into his plans to utilize the legacy weapon, hoping to create an individual fit to wield this power. Eventually, this project bore fruit in the birth of Gerard Capuchin, who would go on to become legendary in his own right. In the early stages of the Phyrexian invasion of Dominaria, Benalia would suffer greatly the Phyrexian general Sabo Tavik would send her slayers throughout the nation, hoping to eradicate the bloodline of Clan Capuchin. At the same time, refugees from Sarah's realm would appear throughout Dominaria. The angels would fight alongside the people of Banalia against the horrors of Phyrexia. But even they were not enough to grant the nation victory. By the time the invasion reached its conclusion and Yongmuth was defeated by Urza's legacy weapon, it was too late. The Empire of Banalia, much like the rest of Dominaria, had all but fallen into ruin, devastated by the invasion. Over the next 300 years, Banalish civilization declined. The people were largely disorganized and left to fend for themselves. So, when disaster came again in the form of the Temple Crisis, it truly felt as if the nation was finished. The devastation of the Temporal Rifts,
combined with the Phyrexian invasion and destruction brought on by a horde of slivers, finally reduced the shining Benalia city to ruin. It would not be until after the mending took place that this nation would reunite more powerful than it was before. The seven clans that ruled Old Benalia once again came together to reunite the nation. They transcribed the Compact of the Seven Pillars, which emulated Torsten von Ursus' original edict, meaning the seven houses once again shared authority and duty with one another. The city of New Benalia a marvel of white limestone and stained glass murals was built over top the ruins of the old capital, and the Empire of Benalia now enjoys a period of restoration and cultural renewal post-mending. The Knights of New Benalia don armor of white, gold, and silver, adorned with ceremonial decoration known as Glaze Plate enchanted to further protect against the enemy. For its part in helping to fight off the Phyrexians, as well as its aid in constructing new Benalia, the Church of Sera now sits as the state religion of this rebuilt empire. Only House Kroger retains worship of Gabriel Angelfire. The floating spires of the Church of Sera rest above the capital city of New Benalia, and its angels lie ever ready to assist in defending the nation from the vile corruption of the Cabal, a growing force of darkness on Dominaria. Today, New Benalia stands as a shining example of Dominarian resilience. Its people have endured some of the plane's harshest apocalypses and have come out stronger for it. Throughout this empire, the shining hope of the people is represented in the stained glass art that adorns many structures, even the armor of the elite Banalish knights. Its people are united, not only through their allegiance to the seven clans, but to one another through ties of religion or the concept of a star clan. A star clan being what occurs when Banalish citizens are born under the same constellation. Under the guidance of the Council of Seven, and with the support of its various knights, angels, and heroes, New Banalia is a nation that is sure to endure long into Dominaria's future. Benalia is a nation seen throughout Magic's 25-year history, and has received great focus in the 2018 set Dominaria. Knights and soldiers from Benalia are typically white-aligned, as are the many angels hailing from this nation. The history of Benalia is outlined on its own saga card from Dominaria. The first two chapters of this saga create knight creature tokens, and the final chapter increases the power and toughness of knights you control until the end of the turn. While this saga doesn't tie into any specific part of Benalia's history, it does a great job at illustrating the knights in shining armor the nation is known for. As magic sets continue to get released, it's undoubtable that we'll see a return to fan-favorite setting, Dominaria. Since that's the case, it's equally likely that we'll be seeing more Banalish cards in the future as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like or sharing this video with your friends. If you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell, you'll be alerted whenever I upload new videos. Finally, if you have a suggestion for a topic you'd like me to cover, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again, and have a great day.